Greetings all, Ferrari Man 601 here. Welcome to Silverstone, and welcome back to F1 2017. We're going to do another classic race here today in the MP4 13. I have not driven the car yet, and uh, we're going to do a race one shot qualifying as we have been doing here in these classic races. So let's go out on the track and see how the MP4 13 gets on. Last time I drove it was in Assetto Corsa, the Virtua Mod, which unfortunately is no longer with us. Decent sounds. Sounds similar to the 96 Williams. And that Delta is to the Ferrari F2002. No prayer of keeping up with that car. Wheel spin there, leading off the throttle. Down the infield straight. Sound here is like a cross between the 96 Williams and the uh, Ferrari F2002, F2004. The F2002 and the F2004 uh, appear to have the same sounds in this game, which I suppose is okay considering they're very similar cars with very similar engines. The cops are going to need a downshift through here at very least. Yep, there you go. Too bad playing with the throttle all the way through. Looks like about a 16,800 RPM rev line on this Ilmore Mercedes. Screaming down, hangar straight in sixth gear, over 300 clicks, 305, 310. Breaking into stow, fourth gear, hit the apex nicely. A little bit of oversteer coming through the midsection of the corner, now breaking. way past <laughs> the Delta there on the F2002. What is this quality lap good for? Good for P1 in class. All right. Suddenly I'm feeling more optimistic. I was thinking we'd be a bit further back than that. But uh, yeah, we're up on the other MP413 by three tenths. So I'll take that. And here's how the class shakes out with the 413s, 14Bs there, the Williams cars in third and fourth. Ferrari 412 in P5, the two MP46s in 6th and 7th, the other 412 in P8, and then the 44s bring up the rear in P9 and P10. Looking at the overall results, we're going to start in P11. So I am obviously the first of the Class 2 cars. Any Class 1 guys in this mix? Nope. So there it is. Class 1s are in front of us. Beginning with the Renault R26, the Soul R... Nope, there are two R26s in the field. I thought there was only one. There are two. However, um, nope, there is two of each kind of car in this race. Absent from this race, though, are the F2004s, which is probably a good thing, considering there's no way that anybody can compete with those F2004s. But we do have the RB6 in there, so we'll see if we can do anything with the R26. It's possible, because the R26s tend to be a little bit slow in these classic races, but we will find out in mere moments. Okay, so here we are sat on the grid, and as you can see, it is raining, and it is not just raining a little bit, it is absolutely raining buckets here on the grid at Silverstone. So, yes, I'm in pole position in class, but that is all about to go completely out the window because it is wet, and it looks like it's going to stay wet, as we can see from the session forecast throughout the entire duration of this race. So, 13 laps is the race distance. Put in a little bit more fuel just to have a little bit more of a delta there. Park for May conditions on the car setup. So, there's nothing else we can do. We're set up for dry. However, it is now wet. So, whew, let's see how this gets on. Formation lap. Oh, yeah. Pull away was very slick. That is a lot of wheel spin. It is very wet here at Silverstone. It is raining hard. The track is well and truly inundated. And of course, with the classic cars, we only have wets or dries. really need to 
get some speed up here so I can feel what the grip is going to be. Slidey, but so far it feels like it could be manageable. And I mentioned those R26s have been slow in these classic races. He's slow on the formation lap. But pretty good rain light detail, I must say, on it. just sounds like he's coasting in a single gear here, just holding the throttle steady, maintaining speed. He is actually annoying me quite a bit, and that's a very near spin there <laughs> on the formation lap. Maybe it is a little bit more slippery here than I wanted to admit. set up for the race start. Go into mix three and do the grid. Suddenly I've become a little bit nervous. That half spin coming onto hangar straight just sapped me of all of my confidence. Get that out of my mind. It's time to take the start. Let's see what we could do about that R26. I am anticipating him to be slow. It seems to be the status quo for the R26 in these classic races when I'm not driving it. So let's Keep an eye on the lights. have a look. The start sequence will begin as soon as the grid is formed. Be ready for the clutch. Nice idle sound on this McLaren. Anyway, the grid is formed up. Clutch in, bringing the gear in and bringing the revs up. And off we go. Decent start. The R25 is slow. R26, rather. But I lose traction in the second phase of the start. And into turn one, the R26 is behind us. Yellow flag, green flag. The spinner in the back, I would assume. Shooting it up the inside. Some contact there with the F2007. Very sideways, I am off the racing line. Lots of water offline. However, now we are ahead of that pack in P6 overall. Wow, no brakes. Totally missed the turn-in point. Sliding around the outside. Huh, kept it together though. Okay, that's a good start. Keep it up. Good start, very nearly wasn't. R26 acting as a cushion there, staying on the outside here. F2007 can go, I don't really care. All right, on to Hanger Straight for the first time in race conditions. Grip is manageable. Grip is not great, but it is manageable. F2002 quite uh, expectedly taking the fastest lap on lap one. Turn one. So it is twitchy, but it feels a whole lot more planted than the FW18 did in wet conditions. I will say that much. I 
much more traditional line here. Pushing out wide there. Little bit of hydroplaning, as we say in US English, aquaplaning everybody else. It is very, very wet here. And it is still raining actively. I am expecting the rain to lighten up a little bit as we move on. That's what the forecast said. However, for the moment, it is quite treacherous out here. And F-2007 is gone, completely gone. That's okay, though. He's class one. But for standard mix, mix two. very close behind. He tried to overtake. He thought better of it. He's trying to control that wheel spin a little bit more out of the low speed corners. Perhaps mix two will help slightly. Very slightly. The higher speed corners, I don't think it really matters. I do have to say, though, I really like the wet weather effects. Um, the best wet weather effects that I had seen prior to this was actually on F1 Championship Edition or F106 PS2, PS3, and uh, that was really cool, the rain effects on that game, because it just completely covered the camera, and uh, you couldn't really see much of anything. That was really authentic, in my opinion. Hydroplaning off the circuit there. The other F2007 goes. The MP423 coming to play. The R26 coming to play. Everybody, just come at once, why don't you? Still hydroplaning in fifth gear. Offline, of course. The other R26, come on. You're going to push me off the circuit like that? And now I get a warning for that. I get a warning because he dive bombed up the inside, pushed me off the circuit, and I get a warning. That is BS. That is total BS. But at least it's not a penalty. Still P1 in class. Again, the only thing we care about here is the class. We don't really care about class one. We don't really care about overall. Going to mix one here, really try to control that wheel spin. Better. engine modes, depending on where I am on the circuit, fuel's not a concern. So lower engine modes trying to get the power down. This corner is treacherous. As you might expect, when you get offline, you get into the deeper standing water, and uh, that happens. You definitely want to stay online, <laughs> if at all possible. got four tenths behind me.
fall off the road again. It is really wet. <laughs> Stating the obvious. Short shifting, trying to control that wheel spin. I do have to say, though, it is a very nice change of pace to be able to drive in the wet. Your hardcore sims like iRacing and Aceto Corsa, they don't have wet weather conditions. R-Factor 2 does, but I'm still not totally happy with R-Factor 2. So this is as close as we're going to get. pace here is very slow, I am aware. I'm just driving to the conditions. Really just trying to survive. So far, it's a pretty, it's a pretty busy affair for me. I'm managing those engine modes. Of course, keeping an eye on the fuel delta, we're still good. Not really concerned about it. But I'm pretty busy in the cockpit. Approaching halfway. Probably gonna be lapped by the front runners at some point. Not quite yet, but soon. So I don't think we will complete all 13 laps. Our gap to the guy behind is 1.4, almost 1.5 seconds, so we are pulling away, which is very good. Offline here a little bit. Back onto the line. Lots of short shifting control on that wheel spin. 54.7 seconds to the race lead. Hey, no big deal. Can make that up in a lap or two. Ah, <laughs> no. I do feel like the rain has gotten slightly less intense. Maybe very slightly. Very, very offline. Just try to control it. Riching up the mixture now for the high speed section. The traction's not that much of a concern. Watching the curbing here. I'd be very careful on the throttle whenever I do choose to put my wheels on the curbs because they are very slick indeed. Gap to the guy behind now only a tenth of a second. Where did he find all of that pace? We're just boomeranging here lap by lap. Some information on Lewis off. They're slowing down. 
It seems like there's some kind of problem with the car. Somebody's got a problem. Not me, hopefully. Still got that other guy on my gearbox, it would seem. Turn. That's the R26. Where'd he come from? I didn't get a blue flag. Well, that was for position, technically speaking. Alrighty then. Again, still only concerned about my class. R26 has far superior traction. If I could keep in touch with him, it'd be a good thing, because as you can see, he cleans up the line for me a little bit, provided I could stay on it. I don't think we're going to be able to keep in touch with him, even. out almost six seconds and uh, half a lap. R26 far superior to the MP413 as you might expect. Fuel is looking really good. You're managing it well. Right, the team are happy with me in terms of how I'm managing the fuel. I'm just richening it up on the straights and then leaning it out in the corners just to help me with traction. I'm not really concerned about fuel use. Put a little bit of an extra buffer into the car. Martin Giles is out of the race. That was one of the R26s, I believe. That means there's a yellow flag somewhere out on the circuit. Find the yellow is a completely different question. Working lap 9 of 13. There is a yellow up ahead. And there's some debris. Did he crash? Did he have a puncture? He's off here on the left. There he is. I don't know who would have run into him here. Might have had some sort of mechanical failure on the suspension or a tire because there was debris offline. Yellow flag here as well. There's the other car involved. It's one of the FW14Bs. P10 now, overall. 2.9 seconds is the gap to the guy behind. So I'm feeling okay about that. And as you can probably hear, there is a rather high degree of concentration going on. 14.9 seconds to the guy in front of me in the R26. So I'm not concerned about him. He's not my problem. Not really racing him. Technically I am, but I'm concerned about the class standings.
gap to the car behind feels stable. So not particularly worried about anything at the moment, just trying to keep it on the island. Between the two white lines. Please and thank you. Rain has definitely subsided quite a lot. 2.9 seconds to the guy behind. Just manage that gap. There's four laps of fuel remaining. Four laps of fuel left and two laps left in the race, assuming we don't get lapped. So I'm feeling okay. I really wish it were in the dry though. Ten minutes left in the rain period. Uh, I am thinking we're going to finish the race before the rain totally stops. It is still actually raining. Can see it. It's always difficult to tell if it's raining while you're at speed because you've got the water just spraying everywhere. But uh, it is still raining. I can't see it. Just peeking between the drops on the camera lens. cars in front. I don't know if they're back markers. They might be the MP44s. I really don't know what has happened with the field. 21 seconds to the next car for position, so those cars in front of me cannot be guys I am racing. They are the MP44s, how about that? And I can hear them now. We've got two laps to go. Snatched it under braking and tad. Got to claw it back. Give me a blue flag, please. Thank you. Flag. Thank you. Really forced me offline, but I can deal with it. We've only got two laps of fuel left. Two laps of fuel left. Two laps of racing left. Well, really, one and uh, I don't know, one and a fifth. I think I've been lapped, or if I if I was, I completely blanked on it because I don't remember being lapped. Remember the R26 is coming through the F2007. No, we have not been lapped. Keep it on the island. Very nearly was lapped, but not actually lapped. Now the question is, does the race winner actually get to come through? 
Does he maintain his pace or does he start his cooldown celebration? Because that would be really annoying to be lapped by the leader after he's already won. Definitely lightening up here now. Too little, too late, guys. Dry line seems a little wider. Not that you could quite call it a dry line, but the, the V line that is somewhat less wet than the rest of the circuit. Two seconds in hand over the guy behind. Just very judiciously ring the car home. Checkered flag is up for me. Here we are. That's the class win. Class win, D10 overall. That was actually quite a challenge. Really, that was. I'm, uh, I'm pleased with that performance. I am legitimately pleased with that performance. And as the adrenaline dies of course, down, you don't see me on the podium, but uh, three. yeah. Here come the top three, out onto the podium. Or is that me on the podium? I don't know. I'm the class winner. That is my avatar, but by coincidence, did the uh, overall winner <laughs> get assigned the same avatar? It is possible. However, yes, that's a that's an interesting performance here. Um, that was more challenging than I expected. I'm uh, really starting to like, really like these that's classic it. cars. Grand Prix and from Antony, it's goodbye. 1.3 seconds at the end is the final result in class, the overall result. I finish in P10. Did we beat out any class one guys? Only one, the R26 that got a DNF, but you can see just how much faster even that R26 was. His best lap 148 and my best lap 155. So definitely there's a lot of speed differential there. The MP4 fours, I actually lapped both of them. So that's interesting. And uh, one of those 14Bs, I'm pretty sure this is the one that pitted. He was involved in an incident with that R26. He finished two laps down, but he did see the checkered flag. So all in all, that was a really cool race. Um, that was more fun than I had anticipated. Interesting also to see the RB6 splitting the F2002s. Have a look at that. The F2002 took the win, and then the RB6 in P2, and then the second F2002 in P3. The second RB6 finished all the way down in P7. So I wonder if there were some problems for him. But yeah, that was actually a pretty cool race, I must say. So thank you all very much for watching, and we will see you soon.